this is, uh, I suppose, a very pragmatic response from the Prime Minister setting up uh, this task force, this, this particular unit, and it's going to be headed up, I believe, by Oliver Dowden. What, what, what will the role be? I think it will be essentially looking across all government departments to find a way that we can manage this disruption that is inevitably going to come with these series of strikes every day up until Christmas. And I do just think that Oliver Dowden's got a big task on his hands to coordinate that government response and make sure the country can cope and can still function. Do you think the army will be deployed? Because um, if ambulance workers go on strike, that really could put lives in danger. Uh, there'd be an irony if they do go get involved because they, they've accepted a payoff for less than the ambulance workers mm. have rejected. Indeed, and you know, I feel sorry for, for those in the army who are potentially looking over their shoulder thinking, well, what's going to land on my plate? Am I going to have to be driving ambulances or bringing sick people to hospitals in, in one vehicle or another? So, you know, I do feel as if the army being on standby for this type of thing is not what they're there for, not what they signed up for, but I've no doubt that if they are called upon, then they'll do a, a phenomenal job. Um, Steve Barclay yesterday, the health secretary, talking about the requests. He was responding specifically to uh, the Unison uh, strike yesterday, but he said the demands are not affordable. Each additional 1% pay rise for all staff on the Agenda for Change contract would cost around £700 million a year. Why is that message not getting through? Well, I think the unions recognise they've got ministers over a barrel because there is a labour shortage for various different reasons and they realise that now's the time, an opportune moment for them to ask for pay rise. The money isn't there, as, as Steve Barclay was saying. So we can't give them this pay rise if the money in the public purse doesn't exist. And I think there has to be some courage for ministers to really hammer that home to the union bodies and, and make sure they hear it. And, and wasn't there, uh, there a pay review body recommending a pay rise? I think the nurses got £1,400. Some of them it meant it was about a 9% increase. They've had that, and yet still there are to, what, 17.6%, which is way above the rate of inflation. It is. And look, I respect nurses to the hilt. I think they do a phenomenal job and they, you know, they do deserve to be paid fairly. But they have to recognise the wider economic situation we find ourselves in. There are very few people in this country who are getting a pay rise right now. Mm. And nurses have to rally behind the country, recognise it's going to be tough times. In a couple of years, let's hope the economy is looking better and then they can get that pay rise they deserve. It feels coordinated to me. Across, across the different industries, the rail workers going on strike, the ambulance workers, the nurses. Um, we know the trade union movement is fed up to the back teeth of 12 years of Tory rule. Does it feel like, any, like that to you, that this is a move not just to get better paying conditions for their members, but also to damage politically the government? Yeah, I think it absolutely is. You know, we know how the unions operate. We've been around long enough to, to, to recognise that. It feels very much like the late 70s, that yeah. winter of discontent. And I think we're heading for that once again. It won't be lost on the unions that there's an election uh, around the corner in a couple of years and they want to, to position the government in, in a way that says these, these guys can't run the country in the way we want it to be run. So I do think it's political motivated just as much as standing up for their members. Of course, it's, it's the ordinary people, you know, not just now people trying to get to work, but patients, children in hospitals, people suffering from cancer, patients who won't get the, the normal service over the next few weeks that will will be seeing the, the direct results of these strikes. They will be. And, you know, my heart goes out to anyone who's got a uh, an operation scheduled that's had to be cancelled or anyone who falls ill over that period when ambulance, strike, when ambulance um, drivers are striking. So these are serious matters. This is life and death. And I think that that shouldn't be taken, you know, into trivial matters of politics that a lot of these unions are deploying.